It's my hope that we can someday stop talking about fossil fuels. It's my day, it's my hope that one day soon we'll be talking about solar, we'll be talking about renewable energy, and our, our fight against fossil fuels will be not necessary. So renewable energy, for every one job in the fossil fuel industry, solar can produce 15 jobs and wind can produce 12 jobs. So our friends that are in the White House now, in the Governor's Mansion now, that want to produce jobs, again, we need to look up to the sun and not to the fossil fuel industry for those jobs. Um, nationwide, the renewable energy sector is already generating more jobs in the fossil fuel sector. Um, so jobs program, that's a renewable energy program. 2011 uh, was the first time in uh, global, uh, global investments in renewable energy surpassed investments in fossil fuels. In 2015, we also saw a new record. The Solutions Project shows that we can be off fossil fuels by the year, entirely by the year 2050. It's technologically and economically feasible, says Stanford engineer Mark Jacobson. It's only the political and social will that stands in our way. So friends, I take that as an open invitation to get going on changing hearts and changing minds. So instead of talking about renewable energies, though, we're here talking about fossil fuels once again. In 2015, Florida was 62% dependent on natural gas. That was up from 44% in 2007. So building out our additional infrastructure, in addition to the health and environmental impacts, that keeps us dependent on fossil fuels while climate change rages on. And Florida is ground zero in the United States for climate change and for sea level rise. It floods in Miami on a regular basis under sunny skies. Our aquifer is already under threat from saltwater intrusions. So we don't need to build out our fossil fuel infrastructure anymore. Let's move off of these fuels that will run out and do exacerbate climate change. Now everyone, every one of these government agencies that we are here today to hold accountable, every one is full of people. It's full of people who have hearts and who care. And so I'm here to decide I'm here today to ask those decision makers to listen, to listen to their hearts, to ask themselves, what are they doing to the Florida that they will give their children and grandchildren? To ask themselves, what are they doing to their neighbors' land, to their friends' favorite state parks, to their own drinking water? And what do they need to do to stop it? Speaking of children. <laughs> and the sibling of the youth, youth, uh, youth, children, youth speaker who's coming up shortly. So I'm asking those people to listen to their minds too because what is going down is not logical. It doesn't hold up to scrutiny. Investing in future fossil fuels does not hold up even to the logical mind. The Federal Energy Re Regulatory Commission used Spectra's, Spectra Energy's own contractor to conduct the environmental impact statement for the Sable Trail um, pipeline. The US Army Corps of Engineers didn't even conduct one, but relied on that flawed impact statement that was conducted by Spectra Energy's own, um, own company. <laughs> so a sign I saw from Saturday's Women's March stated, what do we want? Evidence-based science. When do we want it? After peer review. So let's try that. What do we want? Evidence-based science. When do we want it? After peer review. All right, it doesn't scan really well, but you know, good, 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 uh, good sign. And it, it was actually a child who appeared to be about 12 years old that was holding that sign. So I think we need to listen to our children more. So I'm also asking those people, the people that are in charge of these decisions to listen to their titles. I'm asking Governor Scott to listen to his title. The root of the word governor comes from a word meaning personal keeper, protector, guide. 
It also has its base in steersman or pilot. Governor Scott, your environmental policies are steering us headlong into an iceberg. I'm asking the head of the Department of Environmental Protection and especially the future head of the Department of Environmental Protection to do what that agency is charged with doing to protect our environment. Now the gentleman who was before the legislature um, defending the Florida water rules that recently got passed, um, which are really, really bad, they're, they're, they're loosening up. Well, he's the Deputy Secretary of Ecosystem Restoration. Need I say more? He's Ecosystem Restoration, and he, so even his title asks that he help to restore the ecosystem and not loosen up regulations for our industry. So leaders, you're elected by the people, or you're selected by the elected. We gave them power, and we trust them to do their jobs. So leaders, we ask that you listen to your hearts, listen to your minds, and if you can't do any of that, listen to the people. Yes. So you all are here, and you care, and you can take action. So I encourage you, just as, as the day goes on, to go by and sign that um, statement that's going to be delivered today. And then we also have postcards out to write representatives and senators and tell them to demand an independent environmental impact statement be done by the Army Corps of Engineers. And tell them that construction of the Sable Trail Pipeline should be halted until such a statement is completed. Also here today is a young lady who is a leader already. So Rethink Energy Florida holds an energy, energy camp every year. And our very first energy camp, this young lady was a leader when she first attended when she was eight years old. Today she is 11 and she is in sixth grade. And she is a representative of the millions of children whom we are leaving the planet to. My friends, I introduce you to Charlotte Stewart Tilly.